family here at United Baptist Church welcomes you to our worship service this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in or turning on uh, and you're with us here today. If you tuned in to the radio station, a special thanks for doing that or maybe even just leaving it tuned in. <laughs> that is great and and I never want to forget to thank the folks there at the radio station for their dedication and, and service in bringing these broadcasts to you. Week in, week out, I know sometimes it seems like it's uh, uh, just an automatic thing. You turn on the radio and there, there it is, but uh, there are folks that are dedicating loads of time and effort into bringing these broadcasts to you. Or maybe you're watching on our website, ubctopson.org. You clicked on the sermon link and you're here with us now. And uh, uh, again, the same thing is there are folks here at United Baptist that are going through great, uh, uh, I don't want to say trials, no. <laughs> but but they go, go through quite a bit in order to bring these uh, recordings to you and to uh, uh, have them be of the quality and uh, uh, something that, that uh, you can understand and something that uh, to some degree, right, uh, that we can be proud of that uh, that's coming to you. Because if it came in a less than uh, good uh, recording or anything, then that wouldn't suffice. It would be more of a of a listening and, and watching something that was subpar and it wouldn't take long for you to just to turn it off. But if we can get that quality and, and that is one of the things that is uh, great here is that the quality and the, and the hard work and the dedication of these folks here at United Baptist to bring you these uh, um, services it is undeniably top notch and the best there is oh my goodness thank you again whether you're listening to the radio or or have uh, turned on to the uh, internet thank you for joining us here this morning our joke of the day it, it's a it's kind of a short one but uh, um, did you hear about the fight that broke out at the seafood restaurant two fish got battered yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, anyway. Now, I'm about to show you uh, just a little glimpse at my age, okay? <laughs> but I can remember back in my childhood, a boxer uh, by the name of Muhammad Ali. I can even remember before he changed his name to Muhammad Ali. Do you remember what that name was? That's right. Cassius Clay. One of the things that stands out in my memory, even at my young age, was that this particular boxer was when he identified himself as the greatest. The greatest. And I can remember back in those days uh, where I was living anyways, uh, that someone making a statement like that was considered to be brash conceited and even cocky and because back in those days it was considered a strength to be humble right a person must prove their greatness not by their own declaration no but by their performance and even then you didn't ever declare yourself as the greatest no no uh, it would have to be reported by some someone else, not the person themselves. And here this young up and coming boxer, certainly that did not at the time have the resume that would point out to make such a statement, yet, <laughs> now as we can all come to some sort of an agreement, when it comes to boxing, Muhammad Ali was the greatest of his time. Over the course of time and experience, he did set himself up above all other contenders. After all, not many boxers have had a song written about them, right? You remember, float like a butterfly and sting like a bee? <laughs> 
And while it was considered to be a detriment all those years ago to be so brazen, nowadays, as we look around, we have people all over the place telling us, anyone that will listen, that they are the goat. Yeah, now that even that back in the day wasn't a good thing to be, but today, of course, the goat stands for greatest of all time. To be the greatest in no matter what the situation, there must still be the recognition by others that by whatever the criteria has been set, whatever the height of the bar has been determined to be for greatness, this person, this situation, exceeds that boundary. It is over and above all expectations. To be the greatest means that there is no one above, that there is not a situation that is better, that there is nothing higher or even more. That is until something else comes along and goes beyond that mark. <laughs> oh. But we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. First, we're going to read a portion of Scripture, Scripture from the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 12, we're going to begin with verse 28, and we'll read through verse 34. Mark chapter 12, starting at verse 28. And we read, One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Let us pray together. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. I thank you that it is truly a gift from you. It is a present from you. And even greater than the day itself is your promise of being with us each and every moment of this day. There is not a time when you take a break or take a nap or even blink an eye we are always in your focus. And God, you want the best for us. You have provided all there is for us to, from what we ever will need. And you are there for us, always. Lord, and this morning, you have crafted a message just for us. Oh, the words in the scripture are the same, and my words will be the same, but your message for each of us is as unique as you have made us. You know what it is that we need to hear this morning. Help us, Lord, to hear and to understand. Help us, Lord, to apply what it is as you reveal it to us, to improve us. To be more and more like Jesus. Thank you, Father. And gracious God, I would just pray here and now that you would take the words of my mouth and that you would take the meditations of all of our hearts, Lord, and that you would make them acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Now here in the Gospel of Mark, we find Jesus answering a question 
that was presented by a religious teacher. I find it interesting here that this religious teacher is not identified as either a Pharisee nor a Sadducee. We find in the verses just before our scripture, and I always encourage you to please read the scriptures before and after just so you get a good context into what we are looking at here, all right? But we read in the scriptures just before our what we read that Jesus was finding himself being grilled, being grilled by the religious rulers. They were stepping up their game, if you would, to try to bring Jesus down. They were intensely trying to find fault in Jesus, to try to get him to say or to do something that they could prove that he was not the Messiah as he claimed to be. We remember that there were two groups, as, as I introduced just a moment ago, two groups of Jewish religious leaders at the time. There were the Sadducees that believed that God's scripture was just the writings of Moses, those first five books of the Bible. And in their view, the big difference, the, the major difference between Pharisees and Sadducees was the fact that the Sadducees did not believe in a resurrection. It was not declared in one of those first five books of Moses of any kind of a resurrection. They believe when a person dies, that's it, nothing more. And then there were the Pharisees that had accepted the other writings that we have included, many of them we have included in our Bible in the Old Testament. They did believe in a resurrection and that there was life after death. Now these two groups were basically opposed on just about everything and anything there was except Jesus, except Jesus. They had a common enemy and against him they could and did join forces. Now back in verse 13 of Mark chapter 12, before that that we read, we find the Pharisees were trying to trap Jesus with the question of paying taxes to the Romans. Is it right? And Jesus successfully answered their question that was intended to trip him up and left them all amazed. <laughs> then in verse 18, the Sadducees stepped up. It was their opportunity to try to make Jesus stumble with a question. And their question had a, uh, um, a theme of regarding marriage and this supposed resurrection that everyone else is, was talking about, to which Jesus answered their question also. Again, leaving these educated, highly respected religious leaders looking foolish. And then we come to our scripture this morning. That is why when it says that uh, the first verse, verse 28 read, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, okay? That are, those are the debates that were going on just before the scripture that we read. But many believe with these unsuccessful previous two attempts to make Jesus reveal himself as a fraud, this teacher of the law may have actually been a lawyer, okay? May have actually been a religious lawyer, someone that was more fluent in the legal aspects of Jesus and his teachings. And his question, what is the greatest commandment? Which one of the commandments is the goat? <laughs> greatest of all time. Which commandment is the goat? Which is an interesting question when asked by a Jewish person, let alone a highly educated teacher of the law, because we remember that the Jews believe that the only way to achieve salvation is in the keeping of the law. 
and the law must be kept in its entirety. If a person broke one law, we remember, then it is considered that they have broken them all, which lends itself to the consideration that all of the laws are of equal importance. If Jesus would pick out one command, if he would pick out one commandment over another, they could then have the precedence to throw out all of Jesus's teachings and expose him as a fake. Now Jesus's answer to this question begins with a common Jewish introduction. Did you notice that? The, this introduction to, the, to his answer was one that this devout Jew recited at least twice a day. Hear, O Israel, Jesus said, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now right off the bat, Jesus tugs at this inquiry with recognizable and obvious Jewish tradition. Jesus lets this questioner know exactly where he is coming from. Jesus continues with a summary of the very commandments that this teacher of the law was wanting him to place a value on, a ranking as to which individual law was the most important, which one was the greatest. And Jesus didn't do that at all. No, in his answer, Jesus told that inquirer back then and us here today that all of the laws are important. Humanly speaking, we like to, don't we though? We like to put everything on some sort of scale, something that, that will list things from highest to lowest, something that we can then prioritize, something that is more important or over another. That way, we can pick the important ones and, and maybe let some of those lesser ones slide. <laughs> we do have a tendency, right? to view things on such a two-dimensional way. Like writing a list on a piece of paper, we start with what we consider to be the most important thing on top and work our way down. When we do that, I believe we treat each item as a separate item, okay? However, if we look at these things the way Jesus describes them in his answer this morning, we recognize that they are not separate individual things. They are all interconnected. They are all interconnected. What happens to one item affects what happens to all of the others. That is how God sees our efforts and our desires to serve him. He does not regard any one person higher than another. Each and every one of us is equally important to God. He sent Jesus to earth for everyone, for God so loved the world, right? What God rates us on is if we are being faithful to him. Not what we are doing, how we do it, or the expanse to which we do it in. All he cares about is that we are following where he wants us to go. Because you see, in God's eyes, God considers each and every one of us to be the greatest. The goat, as we are following him, and his leading, the greatest of all times. God has created you unique, and he has created you to be the greatest you that you are. <laughs> oh my goodness. And let us be clear in our understanding, our salvation does not come in the keeping of the law. It is in our faith in Jesus. Our salvation is based on our faith in Jesus. That is why, as we continue on with our reading this morning, that is why Jesus told that leader that you are not far 
from the kingdom of God. He didn't say he was there, all right? He still put his faith in the law. However, with his answer back to Jesus, Jesus tells him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. In other words, keeping the law, all right, is done as a personal response out of our recognition of God's love for us. And he demonstrated his love for us through the sacrifice of his son, Jesus. Keeping the law does not lead us to salvation. It comes, salvation only comes through our trust in Jesus. And God desires us to personally know Jesus. And thus, we will have eternal life through him, not in keeping of the law, but through our trust in Jesus. Do you trust in him this morning? Is your trust in Jesus this morning? Our country is going through a political election year. Every four years, the election of a president. Many people spend a lot of time and efforts in such election on both sides, on either side, on all sides of, the, of this election. Is our faith? in our government, no matter who is elected, our government made of man will let us down. However, Jesus will never let us down. Oh, <laughs> he may not answer in the way that we think that needed to be answered. His way are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts right? He sees the large, the big picture. He sees the past, the present, and the future. Our faith, our trust is in him. No matter the situations we find ourselves in, good or bad, we put our faith and trust in Jesus, not in keeping of the law, but in him and his death for us, taking our sins to the realms of hell itself, rising from the dead on that third day, coming and being with folks here on this earth, and then ascending into heaven, where he is now seated at the right hand of God the Father, waiting to return at a time only the Father knows he is waiting to come and bring his children back with, with him. If you don't know this Jesus, if you haven't put your faith and trust in him, give us a call here at the church. Seek out a pastor, a friend. Ask them, what can I do to know Jesus and to be saved? That is our number one thing we need to do while we are living on this earth is to make sure our relationship with Jesus is all that it can be. And it begins with that personal relationship, that decision to make him our Lord and our Savior. Let us pray. Gracious Father, again, I thank you for this time and I thank you for your message for each and every one of us. Lord, bless your message today. And Lord, as we come before you now, we come before you not only with our hearts, not only with our minds, but Lord, with our voices raised in prayer together to you as we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.